So, hey, you want to uh, put this around your neck? You like chains. <laughs> Handle. Oh, oh, man. These are the old ones, right? We don't have, this is not the new ones, right? I hope so. I hope Drop about. Yeah, they're done. Oh, wow. they sound, I heard it. It's Boom. Right. All right, guys, we are back from Texas. Awesome trip. We're up there with Determined Veteran. He picked up a beautiful 2019 GT350. We did have to put my twin turbo install on hold. We were in the middle of an oil pump gear change and we have some special help today. We got service things and then we have Ken Speed Addict 731. Okay. We have everything torn down at this point already. We do have the oil pan already dropped. All you got to do, it's really simple guys. So you got a bunch of bolts down there, just drop it and that's going to give you access to pull out your pump. So this whole thing, disassembling all this is really just to get back here for your oil pump gears and we are also going to change out the crank sprocket is this a necessary mod for a twin turbo build yes and no a lot of guys talk about maybe it won't be necessary because you don't have the added uh stress coming from a top mounted blower on the crank down here so maybe you might want to skip it however comma though a lot of guys think that oil pump gears are a necessary mod because of rpm so we're going to be spending this thing over 7,500 RPM, over the factory limit, and it's just better to be safe, more safe than sorry. Simple enough, get your coil covers off, get your intake manifold off, which we have already done. We did our IMRC lockout uh, since we're going to do force induction, and then getting your timing cover off is simple enough as well. But now we are to the point where I think this video is going to make a lot of sense for you guys. Once you get all this stuff off the car, what is the next step? What do you do? Well, that's what we're going to do today, and then hopefully we get it back together, and then actually start mounting up some of the turbo so as of right now we're still waiting on some parts i know i know uh we're just playing around with the mailman i guess but we're waiting on a fuel pump or boost controller we're waiting on several things right here is the turbo kit so we're going to get some of this hopefully started and uh, go as far as we can that way whenever things shows up in the mail we'll be good to go and we'll rock on all you got to do with an 1819 you got to drop that oil pan right there so drain it out drop it down i'm so old <laughs> get up and then uh, that will give you some clearance so you can drop this down so one of two things are gonna happen uh, we're gonna put this back together successfully or uh, the opposite so <laughs> I guess continue the video and we'll see how this goes no yeah we'll actually put this on camera uh, we're actually discussing he has uh, Speed Addict 731. He's got some just totally awesome Gen 1 and Gen 2 Coyote teardown procedures. I want to say if you have a Gen 1, Gen 2, you can reference this video, yes, but also go follow his videos as well. Very well done because you actually had the engine outside of the car. On the Gen 1 and Gen 2, you yeah. leave the oil pump bolted up. So the engine I left out of the car, I actually left it bolted up. Yeah. The fan bolted up so I could show you how to get to the boats. The Gen 3 is totally different. The Gen 3 is made in, to, there goes the probably 10 millimeter. Uh, <laughs> the Gen 3 is actually part of the oil pan. And the pickup tube is part of the oil pan, so you have to unbolt it and drop it down so you can move it around and get it out from the oil pump. There's just enough clearance, guys. You don't have to raise the engine or any of that. Just make sure that you take all the bolts out. Simple enough, they're all 10 mil, and it drops down, and you have just enough clearance right there so then we could take our, our chains off get all this stuff out of the way get to our oil pump itself so what we have here in front of me is our crank sprocket now these are from boundary now this is the cool thing here is that a lot of you guys have had boundary this is what i recommend uh got these from hellhorseperformance.com jeff gray awesome thank you so much for sending these out to me but this is a revision these are the new ones if you watch it's just a six He's doing or has done the same turbo build in his car. I actually started my process a little bit before him. He got his done about four days. We're still waiting on a couple of pieces to put mine together. But this is the highlight right here. So completely new design and they're a little bit more slick, a little bit more machined down and should be just a little bit more slippery and uh, which is all good things with when it comes to oil pump gear. So that's it, boundary. This is what you wanna buy right there. And the cool thing is they're sealed. Yeah, so what we've done is put the stock bolt back in there. It's an 18 mil, comes with a washer and then- Normally you would have yeah. a crank socket. This yeah. guy, it's a, it's a just a round socket. It's got a keyway. So it slides on to the crank yes. and uses the keyway and then you can turn the crank. You can do that, but 
basically the main thing the reason we use this spacer right here is that what we want to do is you want to pull the bolt tight up against something because this bolt right here would not get tight without something there and then you, you want to sandwich something so everything's tight so it'll spin right without breaking something right so now we just need to move it to 12 o'clock and always go clockwise you can take the spark plugs out. I was just going to say, the do you have plugs in there? Easier. I can take them out real quick. You're going to change them out anyway, correct? Yeah. So we can take them out. Okay, let's do it. It makes it a lot easier because yeah. uh, right now, All when you're on the compression stroke, yep. and you're on the compression stroke, and you're fighting the motor with the spark plugs out, you're not fighting it out. The air can come out. Everything looks fine. Look, you think it's okay? So we got a little oil. Yeah, you're not. On two I, of I the cylinders. I don't see buildup right here like what we do when you're burning a lot of oil. Yeah, it looks fine. Um, no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't stress it too much at this point. Um, if you do start suspecting something, do a compression test. Compression test, yeah. Good. I'll come see you and we'll, we'll figure yeah. it out. Uh, probably blow by, but... Uh, I think it's the tick. It's, it's a tick. <laughs> <laughs> now we got the plugs out, so we're going to get it on to uh, turn around at 12 o'clock. Much easier. And guys, you're going to hear a little noises here and there. Don't be alarmed. It's not nothing. And guys, what you can do, like right now, we're, we're not working on this side. Right now, we're working on this side. We're trying to get the cams in a neutral position. And what you can do is this phaser. Now, be careful. This phaser has an R and an L. But now, a lot of people get confused on an engine between right and left. A lot of people think it's when you're looking at the car. So right this would be this the side. of the engine. Other way around. Yes. yes. It's as if you're sitting in the car. Yes. We're at 12 o'clock and the L's up. So we're basically, we're out. So we need to go back around at 12 o'clock again when we're going to get the, the R up. It ain't got to be 100%, guys. It's just got to be right in the vicinity. Now, as you can see, the R is up now. And the cams are in a neutral position. So when we take the chain off, nothing's going to flip. And do anything no pressures on any of the valves springs or anything like that so you're good to go so this is where you want to take the right hand chain off yeah, yeah. take tension off mm -hmm. remove on to these guys and then the uh, chain's gonna come off it's gonna come off yes. okay so next we're gonna take the actual chain off now what you can do guys if you want to you can mark the chain if you want to if you look the chain has uh, already got colored keyways for you. Don't be scared of this. It is foolproof. If you just take your time and, and watch what you're doing, you can do it. Guys, go please follow Speed Addict 731. Um, this is the most surgery I've ever done in a car, believe it or not. And I'm mostly self-taught. But we're trying to do this twin turbo thing in the garage. That way you can follow along and do it yourself. And he's a Ford Tex. If you were to take this tensioner off right now, these cams would... would yeah. Would yeah, so... We're not going to mess with that right now. we got to turn it again, yes. work on this side before we can mess with any of this. So make sure you guys are following the video. Do this right. So right now, the keyway is sitting at 12 o'clock. Yes. Okay, we're on the compression, so we're good to go. So now we've got to turn the keyway to 5 o'clock. Do you see how fast Yeah, that it spins real fast. Now, Hopefully that? you guys that's caught that. Yep. Done, that's what the cams would have done, but the cams would have moved separate from the crank, and that's what you don't want. Right. Feel right there. It's dead on 5 o'clock. It moved to 5 o'clock. Yep, so down here underneath there, there's a lip. Pretty easy to tell once you get it down there, but yeah, it's dead nuts right there. So This, this side right here, now this is where people get scared. They're like, my R is almost facing up. Well, on this side, your L is going to be kind of over here somewhere. Okay. The best way to tell is what you want to do is you want to come over here and you want to look at your lobes on your cam. And as long as your lobes on your cam are not pushing down on nothing, you're going to have a couple that look like they are, but trust me, they're not. As long as your lobes on the cam are not pushing down on anything, you are good to go. And this is pretty much where you want it to be. It's a little different from side to side. You know, the R's pointing up. The L is pointing out this way. But that's yeah. just the way that they do it. A lot of people get frightened because the R, they're like, my R's up. I've had a couple of people message me. Mm -hmm. You're fine. The L is going to be somewhere over in this vicinity somewhere. And when you, when you go back with it, the most important thing when you're timing it is you want your painted marks to be on the L and to be on the dot, not the keyway. You've got a dot on the sprocket, a timing dot. Yeah, we'll show you that here in just mm -hmm. a second. It's on the sprocket. So when you go back, that's what you want it. If you have the painted links, one on L and one on the sprocket, it is in time. I always tell people to rotate the engine once you get it all timed. Two crank revolutions. Okay. To make sure nothing jumps. 
or nothing like that. But don't be scared. Your timing marks will not it's be. Not line up they again. will not line up. It's like it one in like every. It's like revolutions. Yeah, or... it's some crazy number. The three valves used to be 26 to 28 revolutions. <laughs> it's ever so many revolutions. The timing marks will end up dead nuts back on their spot. But it takes that many revolutions. A so a lot of people get scared, but that's no reason to get scared. Doing this one-handed. There you go. You got there it. There we you go. So, hey, you want to uh, put this around your neck? You like chains. <laughs> now I just slide this crank sprocket off. Some of them slide off easy, some of them go on easy, and some of them don't like to go on too easy. Well, you know, you know that's what she said. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there is... Okay, guys, there's yeah. our mark we was talking about. Yep. This is where the crank keyway goes, and that's... When I, when I say 12 o'clock and 5 o'clock, I'm talking about the crank keyway. But the timing mark is actually right here. So that's the that's the timing mark we're talking about. Of course, we're not reusing this. We're going with the... New boundaries. Uh, new boundaries. So, yeah, next step is oil pump's going to come off. And remember, we've already got it loose down there. Um, and it should be simple. we just got to find... Uh, wow, they are... Yeah, these, yeah, they're different sizes. These two are the exact same size. Yeah. This is one size, and then this is one size. Thanks, Ford. All right, guys, all of this hard work comes down to what's inside of here. Such a small thing to replace, but so much work that has to be done. It's all right. This is what we do, and this is going to basically bulletproof the engine just a little bit more. All right, guys, this is what it comes down to. We have our old ones here, wheel pump gears. Already showed you the old sprocket. The new one looks uh, kind of similar to this, just shiny and new. So the difference here is that they, this is actually a little bit heavier, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's a completely different material. This is, what, are they, what is this, like a cast, basically, material? I could probably drop this. We may actually do that it, to see if it actually work, shatters. The Gen 1's bright like that. The Gen 2's, you kind of got to make them. The Gen 3s are just... Look, guys, these cost a couple hundred bucks, usually. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing it in your garage, you can go pay a shop, do whatever. But honestly, doing it yourself, yes, it looks involved, but it's it's not that bad. Sometimes oh. you get like that. I'm just tired. I don't in know. Texas? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the hell were we talking about? <laughs> you threw me off with the Florida thing. <laughs> Florida? What do you mean Florida? Florida? Did I say Florida? Yeah, I mean, See, that's what I'm talking about. I'm... <laughs> So where's your, like, where's your mind? This is what happens when you get three hours of sleep where's for like the past mind? six your months. Mind is somewhere else. Uh, else, <laughs> yeah, somewhere else. Sorry, guys, we're trying to stay on track here. Oh my gosh, I can't even speak English today. <laughs> Gee, this is the new design from Boundary. It's just made a little bit differently. It's got a different coating on it. Should be super slick inside, which is good. But uh, yeah, I'm, I kind of want to take these outside and then uh, shatter you them. Can. Yeah, they might. They might not. Let's, I kind of want to. I kind of want to do it. I'm not going to test it, obviously, on this. But no, the, no, no, I wouldn't. Either. <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to do that. Let's go do that. Let's t let's break them. All right, guys. So we're going to see what these stock oil pump gears can handle. Oh, oh man. Oh no! What happened? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Look at that. Nothing. These are the old ones, right? We don't have. This is not the new ones, right? I hope I so. <laughs> they don't look as they don't look as good as the, not the no. new ones. <laughs> yeah, no, no, those are definitely not the new ones. Yeah, see all the, the scratch. Okay. Yeah, don't throw. It's gonna take more than that now. Come on. Hang on, I'm just okay. leading up to the look. climax, the finale. Drop about, drop about. Yeah, they're done. Oh, wow! They I heard it. I heard it. Nothing. It's cracked. broken. It's Boom! Cracked. cracked right there. So, are you gonna do this in your Mustang? Well, you're not gonna throw them up in the air and break them. No. But the thing is, that's exactly what sizemores look yep, like exactly yep. when he sent me the picture. When you're banging off the rev limiter, yep. This this might happen. This is what's. And the thing about right him now. is he didn't bang off the rev limiter a lot. Nope. He, he didn't. He didn't really. He he left off a of foot brake. They're rated for the OEM red line, and uh, they make you know just like everything else as cheap as possible. So, uh, but now we have the new boundaries installed, so we're good to go. Yeah.
Exactly. Guys, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for watching and making it to this point. Yes, we're a bunch of lunatics that are trying to make our way in the garage, but please do me a favor. Uh, if you would love to see how this twin turbo Mustang uh, develops over the next couple of videos and then in the future, you have to subscribe. Turn the notification bell on because we push three or four videos a week. We are serious on this channel, but uh, and also a good follow these guys too. Ken, Speed Addict 731, Serpent Stangs, who needs to start recording at some point. <laughs> I recorded. Oh, did you? <laughs> so, all right, we're going to continue and uh, just reassemble everything and show you how that works. She likes a lot of lube. She likes it lubed up. It's tight. It's a tight fit, yeah. That's why you need the lube. So there we go. So torque wrench, 89 inches. Inch inches, up. inches, not pound feet, guys, inches. When we pull this thing and we crank this, it goes with ease, as you guys can see here. So we have no issues. Um, and the objective behind doing this, we didn't want to put it all back together. And if something wasn't rotating properly, uh, risk damaging something and then having to do all this again. So, but we have no issues. It turns like butter. And uh, we don't feel any drag. So at this point, I think we're safe and we're good to go. How about a two millimeter? Yep, that two works. Okay, so tensioner, put it in a vise like this, and then you want to close this uh, like so. And then you get like a two millimeter, whatever fits, little pin. Put it through one hole and then out the back of the <clears> other. Could probably even go to two and a half. So the objective here is that you can see right there, there's a lip there hopefully you're picking this up on camera anyway you want to make sure that that does not come undone so when you put it back in the car then you take the pen out okay so that is how this looks guys and then you'll put it back in the car like that take your pen out and it will compress uh, back like it's supposed to I'm just rambling I don't even know how to do YouTube <laughs> I don't know why 26,000 people decided to follow me but hey subscribe turn the notification bell on let's do it that's right let's go fast this is gonna be a fast car what do you think this is gonna make with those turbos 64 67s twins so I'm thinking 750 so guys all right a B C and then D for your oil pump these are the screws that are going back in there they have specific torque settings so in order a is going to be 89 inch pounds B is going to be 18 pound feet and then C is 89 inch pounds and then D is also inch pounds at 177 second phase all right so we're going to scroll through Ken's video right there. explain this for me please I know what we're doing but I can't oh, seem okay. to make okay. a YouTube video today okay so these are torque to yield boats yeah so what we're going to do is as you can see on stage one two three and four this is going to boat a b c and d you're going to torque them down to those uh numbers 89 inch pounds 18 foot pounds 89 inch pounds and 177 inch pounds then you're going to go back it's a degree 45 degrees 75 degrees 75 45 and then 60 60 yes on d so hopefully the camera can pick this up I don't know why I can't talk today on camera, but it's okay. We're working hard. We're getting this done. Or you can just go with German specs. Good and tight. <laughs> Good and tight. Take a look at the orientation here. So we have this lip that comes out, and that's what's going to face away from the engine. And you can see the groove right down there and the lettering. Hopefully, if the camera will pick this up, I guess it's not going to. But anyway, simple enough. You're going to put it down here, and you have the lip underneath the, uh, the end of the crank there. So it's going to go on, slide. Bam, she's home. So, uh, yeah, I don't suck today at you making f***ing YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> is why you got all the timing stuff off, mm -hmm. is clean all this stuff. Yeah, I got a razor blade. We'll get that done. Get your chain back on, and remember your colored uh, section right there, so you got to get it lined up with the arrow, and then the same deal down here on the crank sprocket. So you have a little colored section there and the colored portion of the chain. You want to get those lined up. Yeah, there we go. It's a little bit of light. Make sure yeah. you can barely see it's a it's yeah there you go mark. there you go you can see yep. it right there yep. the mark you got one of your guys down here it's got the the bolt this other one is a free floater right there so it's like that because you put your tensioner back on there remember we still got to lock it down we still got to lock down with the the pin so leave that in place get it bolted down it'll look like this and uh, you're going to take all of the slack out of the right side of this this side which is your driver's side get everything good we're going to pull this pin out okay guys this is one step that's very important right here. Uh, this is very crucial because you can actually get one side mistimed from the other side if you do not turn this correctly at this point. The Gen 2 and Gen 3 
uh, spin, do this exact same procedure the exact same way. What you're going to do is your keyway is at 5 o'clock. So you're going to rotate the crank one full revolution back to, back to 5 o'clock. Then you're going to go continue on and move it around to 12, 12 o'clock. So you're at 5 o'clock, go 360 degrees back to 5 o'clock, then 12, bring it back 12 to 12 o'clock. Yep. That way this side's on the compression stroke. Yep. Yes, at exactly. Top dead center on the compression stroke. So that's what yep. we're going to do now. So guys, the reason we're doing with a with a breaker bar is we don't want it to, if you're doing it with a ratchet, it can actually free spin on you, and we don't want it to, uh, we want to just keep control of it. So that's why right, right, we're using football. Oh, okay. <laughs> so my finger in between it. So we're going to use a breaker bar to spin it around. A little more of a pain, but. But you've got control. Yeah, it can't go, it can't start going somewhere i don't want it to go exactly which it's in time so it really wouldn't hurt nothing it would just be a pain for us to get it back where we want to go yeah see how i did it yep I caught it yep okay if i wouldn't have had that on there to you know so five now we're going back to five now all right we're at five o'clock we went 360 degrees around at five o'clock now we're going to continue around to 12 o'clock see exactly right there see yep. how i caught it yep if I'd have been using a ratchet, it would have moved on you. It would have, it would have went past it, and I'd have had a. I, I can't back it up. So then I'm like, where was I at? Exactly. All right, guys. So now we've got our keyway at 12 o'clock. We run around one full revolution back to five o'clock, then continued on to 12 o'clock. Now that is going to put us back in the exact same spot that we was at earlier to time this with this. Because right now we're timing. We're not only are we timing the uh, cams with the crank. But we're timing side to side now. Yeah. You can't get that off. So that's why you got to rotate it the exact way to get it back to the exact orientation it was when you took the chains off. Working on this side of the engine can be a little bit difficult, but down here. Your timing marks down here now. Yeah, there you go. So you can see it right there. It just so use a mirror and you can see it. Little tricks to help you guys out, but you can see right there. And, and then we then have it done up here. On the R. There it is. Bam. Perfect. Now we're going to put the uh, yeah, sliders back on. Remember, one's going to be free floated. I want to highlight something, guys. When we talk about slack, if you see this right here. You want all your slack on the yeah. tensioner side. Yes. You, you want, want it. Slack here. Exactly. Exactly. So we're going to take the slack out. We're going to spin the crank a little bit. Yep. Not much, guys. Just a little. Just, just to get the slack the out. We haven't. We hadn't tightened. We got it. So what will happen is, yeah, over there. It'll go up against the. Exactly. Just a little, not much. There you go. See, just like that, guys, it went all up, up against it, and then you're done. That's it. That's all you got to do. One other thing, a lot of people, like, when they, after they watch my Gen 2 video, a couple people sent me a message. Yeah. Is once you rotate this, I talked about it earlier. Okay. Is that your timing marks are not going to be on this side because you've rotated the chains. But as long as you got it there, it's still in time. But your timing marks will not actually be sitting here anymore. They'll be moved around. Ex but yes. you're still in time. Yeah. I've had a yeah. couple people message me and they were like, A little confused. Look, it didn't line back up. Right. Am I, am I in time? I'm like, yes, you're just fine. The main thing is when you put the tensioner on and you pop the tensioner, that your timing marks are dead on the two spots. If they are, it's in time. TV or we got some uh, regular stuff here some ultra silicone sealant from Motocraft. And uh, you're going to put right about there so we're gonna go with three eighths drop so that's my little mess right there and then uh got a little bit of there gonna go down there and right there also down here remember to get it down there there and then a couple of spots in the back which we did not film for the oil pan but uh you're gonna see when you're taking it down it's pretty self-explanatory honestly and then remember once we get the timing cover back on we're gonna come back and we're gonna touch up there there and the same on the other side for the coil covers and then yeah we're about to put on the timing cover put back the pulleys and go from there and start reassembling everything and get this thing looking like an engine again Normally, I don't let nobody touch my car, but these two guys I trust, and uh, don't feel bad. I don't let nobody touch my car either. Yeah, there's a, there's a backstory behind why. If you can do everything yourself, you can save so much money, and exactly. And if it breaks, 
you know you did it you know where the, the fault goes so guys we're making some headway got cool covers back on and uh, this is something that's going to be a little bit different for the gen 3 with the di which is right here before you put your pump back in together you need to make sure that it is open it looks just like this yeah you just want to make sure the lobe is not pointing up the exactly. lobe is actually what pushes this up yep and if you have it put putting up when you bolt the uh, pump in all right when you put the pump in you've got a ooh, fuel when you put the pump in, you got a spring right here. Yep. If you have the lobe up and this is pushed up, you're fighting against this lobe when you're bolting this down, and you do not want to do that. So you want to make sure the lobe is away from straight up. You just want it down somewhere, mm -hmm. and then you drop this in. Now, this has got a notch in it, and there's a notch in the piece that goes on the head, so you cannot get it wrong. It only fits in one way. Okay. And you want the roller down, and then this fits in like that. Basically, you just want it down so this does not is not compressing up against, you know, as you're trying to bolt it down. And if you look right there, there's that notch I was telling you about that that fits in. Yeah, yeah you get right there. Well, you can see it. It's yeah. the notch right, right there. there. Right there is what he's talking and about. And then it just... Yeah, it only goes in one way. Yep. And then it just... Just gotta get it to... Drops right in. That's it. Bam. And then that sits it's in there. On top, other way. other way. There you go. Perfect. And see now it's sitting, now it's pretty much sitting down. You're going to tighten it down. It's going to pull down a little bit. Yes. But it's not going to be fighting up against the spring. Like if you had it up, it would be fighting up against the spring, and then it would actually can actually damage. Very very important piece of the puzzle here with the new Gen th Gen Three Coyote engine is the DI. You don't want to get this wrong, but uh, yeah, we're smooth sailing. Got the harmonic balancer back on here. I think we're still are we flush yet? And here's the uh, yeah. We're okay, good. we're good. And here's the tool that we use to put it on. A couple of you guys were asking in my live feed the other day. This you can go to uh, AutoZone. That's what we went to AutoZone, and just got a pulley installer, rented it out, and basically you screw this piece, you screw this all the way down, you screw this piece in. And then when you get this this nut, this bolt tight, then you'll turn this and it'll pull the harmonic balancer in. Yes, and to get the puller off when you guys begin, I did a video, a very quick video, I'll link it video. above. It was a good video, mm -hmm. where you can actually make your own, without spending a fortune, uh, your own puller. So the issue is that a lot of those pullers, you can't get the teeth into the back of the harmonic balancer and lock them in. So I'll link the card above. Go check it out if you're interested in doing some kind of a job like this and saving thousands of dollars. There's probably how many, how many hours? 10, 10, 12 hours in this project? Yeah, you're probably going to save yourself, depending on the shop, anywhere from $800 to $1,000. Yeah. So that is one of the reasons why we like to showcase this stuff on our channels is so that it really saves you money. All right, guys, we have it all back together complete finally uh the most epic hopefully oil pump gear installation video i've ever seen yes <laughs> big help it's uh i don't even know what time it's probably uh, past midnight <laughs> yeah we've been uh busting our butts so there's i don't know like we said if you take this to a shop you're probably looking at 10 to 12 hours of work and maybe 800 to a thousand dollars for the install we did it for free it just takes a little bit of time and uh yeah, not too bad. So all back together, and what we have to do next is this guy back in the engine. Remember, we do have our IMRC lockouts done, which is, uh, I've explained before, but we'll touch on that in the next video because this one's coming to an end. And uh, and yeah, we're going to start the uh, twin turbo installation. And Guys, I'm tired. Uh, big shout out to <laughs> Service Things <laughs> and <laughs> Sweet Egg 731 for helping with the install. Awesome, guys. But yeah. This is it. It's coming together, guys. So just stay tuned to the channel, and this thing is going to be sick once we're done. I'll see you guys in the next video.